Hello and welcome to our talk today on Bless You. Bless You. It's an amazing um, topic which I'd like to share with you regarding the sense that God wants you to be blessed. Be blessed. I don't know if anyone here has ever sneezed before, but whenever you sneeze, at chew, someone normally says to you, bless you, isn't it? And because we're very British and so forth, we, we then immediately say, oh, thank you very much. I was really kind of you and so forth and that. But we forget that actually people are saying to us a blessing. Bless you. May you be blessed. Now, this talk today I, is the first talk back for a while um, from church. And so I really want this to underline an important message, which I'd like you to think about over the summer and maybe even further. That God wants the blessings to start with you first and for then that blessing to then overflow to others. This talk today is about talking about how amazing you are how beautiful you are, how clever you are, how imag imaginative you are, how fabulous you are. I'd like to start though with a talk about what it's not, because sometimes you may think, well this is all very good, but we, we, we don't want to you know, get carried away. Now, the first thing this talk is, is not, this talk is not about losing our self-deprecating sense of humour as being British. I don't expect us to leave here and actually think, you know, we need to not say anything not, um, as not, not, non self deprecating. In England, if you're listening to this or if you're here from England, you would realise that when you talk to your friends, sometimes this happens where you would say, This is my friend Bob, he's a bit of an idiot. And normally you think, that's, that's, that's a bit of an insult. But actually, in England, that is actually seen as a bit of a compliment. I was on Facebook the other day and I put a picture of my uh, National Trust card. It had uh, gone through the wash and, and I put it on there and someone wrote on there that I was a plonker. And I thought it was, and so much so, they wrote it twice. They said I couldn't delete it. You must be a real plonker. Now, the reason why I say that we shouldn't lose our self-deprecating humour is that we, we should take ourselves realistically, but I do say be careful that it doesn't go toxic. And actually think, you know, late at night, oh, I am a plonker, I'm an idiot. Keep the balance. God is calling you to say amazing things over your life. But be real, be yourself. Another thing this talk is not, is when I'm saying to you, uh, God is calling you to say good things about yourself. This talk is not about pulling up your socks and saying you need to do better. You need to not uh, get encouragement from others. This talk is about saying that you, you have so much inside you, so many gifts, but yes, we do need others around. I'm glad, in one way, that every morning the Archbishop of Canterbury, while he's got his slippers on, having a cup of tea, takes an antidepressant tablet every morning because he needs help in that way. I'm glad that there are psychiatrists around to help us. Like when I went through cancer and I had someone helping me get through uh, and, and work a pathway through. It's very important to have people around. But what this talk is about is saying that God has put so much blessing in you and there is so much that you can do to release that blessing. Here's an image for this talk for today. Me and Ali always get our children ready in the morning. And one of the things um, we realised once, um, in particular for me, was that I was getting the children ready, trying to clean their teeth, get everything ready and so forth and that. And then I thought, I'd better do a few emails, do a bit of cleaning, do a bit of, uh, of other things around the house. Then I realised, oh my goodness, I've only got five minutes before we need to get to the school. I'm not dressed yet. I haven't cleaned my teeth. I haven't found all my bits and bobs. And I remember leaving the house. And this sort of phrase came to me as if like from, from heaven. I said to Alice, said, before we dress others, we've got to dress ourselves. Before we give blessings to others, we need to learn how to bless ourselves. Allow God's blessing to come upon ourselves so that we're full and free to give out to others. When we are giving out to others constantly, it's a bit like that picture of me, not completely dressed and a little bit confused. 
So I say to you today, the talk bless you is bless yourself. Unlock the greatness that is within you. Now, I've got a couple of, um, Cade, can I, um, and Ben, can you help me for a moment? I need you just to lift, there's this massive uh, bag of grass. Can you just lift it to, to here for me? And Ben. Callie, you can help too, if you like. Yeah, it's quite heavy. Just so you put, put it on the set there. bag here is a load of grass seed. I'm hoping, I know it's the wrong time of the year to uh, put it down, but we're away for a few weeks and we're going to plant some grass seed in, uh, in, in our back garden. And the talk today is about all of these blessings that God has planted within you. And it's for us to allow the right environment, the right, the right um, atmosphere, the right culture to allow those seeds not just stay in a bag but produce great fruit in your life. The talk you will be pleased to know has is only got two points to it, um, uh, we, we've, at each, each point having ten subheadings, no, I, 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 two, two, two points to the talk. And the first one is build it up. Build it up. I want to encourage you today to build up the blessing within your life. Bless you starts with you building up the blessings that God has put in you. We heard from Romans, did we not, about there is no condemnation in Christ. We also heard in the, the Romans reading today that Jesus' resurrection power is within you. We also heard from the, the reading today that there, there was this, this sense of amazing growth and God is calling us to brilliant things. The thing is, when I'm saying that bless you and the first point, build it up, I, like you, love encouragement from others. However, people around us cannot constantly give us encouragement. I, I love it when someone gives me an encouragement. Mark Twain once said, if I get an encouragement, I can live off it for two weeks. And it is good that we get encouragement from others, from the church. That's why we gather together. It's good to get encouragement from text and so forth. But we can't live our lives thinking that we're going to get constant encouragement, left, right and centre, from others. But I want you to know that you can encourage yourself in the Lord. There is a person in the Bible called David. He was in a foxhole. There was no one around that was with him. Everyone was against him. And even though everyone was against him, he realised that he needed to encourage himself in the Lord. In other words, he said good things about himself. God is with me. God loves me. God guides me. God thinks I'm spectacular. God thinks I'm incredible. It is so important that we have people around us, but we are called to build ourselves up. You know, your words actually create a culture around you. The thing about people such as uh, Martin Luther King, for instance, or uh, Winston Churchill, or Abraham Lincoln, they had the ability to mobilise the English language into action. And we too, hearing the passage about the seas, hearing the passage from Romans, is that we're called to mobilise our words into action. In other words, I can do something, my finances can work out well, well I am healthy, I can do good things in my community, in my school, in my home, in my work, I have a good house, I have a wonderful family. Mobilising your words into action builds you up and that blessing or bless you falls upon you. Yes, we have Jesus with us. Yes, we have the cloud of witnesses saying, come on. Yes, we have the church. Incidentally, whenever I have a funeral, uh, so many people always say good things about the person who has died. And I just want to share that because inside each of us, we carry so many positives about others. I want you just to remember that you are a good person, that you are wonderfully made, and many people around you 
thinking regularly good thoughts about you, about your work, your home. Bless you starts with build yourself up, build it up. Now, how do you do that? Just coming into the end of the first point, just to let you know. You've got to, in a way, look to Jesus. Look to his example of how you build yourself up. You know, it's very easy to do just positive things, which is so good. However, we need to remember Jesus as our example of building up. What did Jesus do? Jesus being God, fully God, fully human, he spent time with his Father, either in the mornings or late at night. Now you think someone that amazing wouldn't need to spend that amount of time. But he was too, too busy not to pray. God is encouraging you to follow his example. Now you may, you may be like traditional and you may be a BCP on your knees praying. But you may be like me who love to walk or love to, love to sing your prayers to God. You may love to uh, uh, draw or you may like to stand up for social, uh, uh, social um, causes. You may want to uh, fight for the local school. Whatever it is, there's a way that you're called to pray. I was just watching um, the film Greyhound with Tom Hanks in it. And in the film, it's a, it's a new film that just come out. And Tom Hanks, at the very beginning, he's the commander of his ship. And even on this battleship, you see him praying. Very still, 10 second prayers. Even when you're in the, the, the firing line, God is calling you to build yourself up and be a blessing to others. One of the things that I'm, just uh, before I go into the second point, one of the things that I've been doing recently of building myself up is learning scriptures. Learning scriptures off, off by heart. You don't need to learn them perfectly word for word, but you can just learn the general gist. One of the ones that, that I'm um, um, saying again and again, and the children constantly hear me saying it, is from 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, where it says, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And when you allow those words to build yourself up, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and self-control. Those words start to take on a culture and all of a sudden I'm mobilising the English language into action to bless me so I can bless others. Does that make sense? I hope it does. That's the first point. The second point, build it up, is the first point. The second point is zip it up. Okay, now build it up, zip it up. Thank you very much. That's my producer there. Good to see you there. <laughs> She's still working hard there. <laughs> zip it up. One of the things with the English language, as I said, is about mobilising into action. But the other thing is that words can become toxic. In a way, a bit like through the COVID-19 we're going through at the moment, when we sing, we have the potential that our words could actually carry a virus. Well, actually, your words, when you're speaking, could potentially carry a virus to yourself and to others. When you say words like, oh, I can't do this, it's not going to work, it's never going to go well, I'm not, I'm not handsome or beautiful enough, I can't do this, this is impossible, um, we've, we've, we've failed before, we're going to fail again. Those words create just a culture around you of negativity. And the words about the seeds being torn or being smothered by worry of this world, of fear uh, about uh, money and, and power and so forth, will just take away all the blessings that God wants you to have. Zip it up. Now you may think, well that's, that's a bit of a, is, is that Dan just coming up with some random phrases? But in the Bible, again and again, we hear this encouragement to be quiet when we say we feel negative things. You can't stop your mind, your mind will still say them, but when you speak them, it creates a world of, uh, you know, of negativity. A person in the Bible called Jeremiah, God called Jeremiah at a very young age, and Jeremiah heard God, and, uh, and God said, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said, hi God, how are you doing? Great, said God. I'm calling you to do an amazing work out in Israel and beyond. Jeremiah said, I can't go because I am too young. God said to Jeremiah, do not say, I think it's very important those words, do not say you are too young. If God says do not say, I encourage you 
Do not say that you're too young, too old, too tall, too small, too rich, too poor, too, too handsome, too sporty to do anything for God. Do not say it because God is calling you. You have an assignment. We need your smile. We need your encouragement. We need your positivity around us. Do not say you cannot. Another example in the Bible is of the spies going into the promised land. There was 12 that went out, they all came back, and 10 of them said, we can't do it, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do it. And that stifled the possibility of going into the promised land. I saved my, my, my favourite to the end, is of Zechariah. Zechariah. I find this actually, it's good to look at the Christmas story in the heat of summer, I think sometimes. You get a different angle of it. And Zechariah was going into the holiest place of, uh, in, 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 the, in the temple. And he was going in there, the, uh, a special person going to go in there once a year. And he went in there and he met with the angel Gabriel and said that your son is going to be John the Baptist. He's going to do an amazing work. He's going to do incredible things. He's going to be the way maker for Jesus. There is no, nothing's going to stop him. He's going to be awesome. Zechariah turned around and said, do you know what? There is no way that's going to happen. How can this happen? How can this be possible? This is never going to happen. No, no, no. Forget it. This is no, 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 not going to happen. Gabriel realised he needs to zip it up. And so he made him quiet. Be quiet. And he came out of this holy of holies, and he was in this, uh, and everyone said, what, did, what happened? What did he say? What did he say? And, and, and the Zechariah is there going, can't say anything. And everyone's thinking, wow, Zechariah, you're so filled with faith. You're this incredibly holy person. You can't talk. But inside his head, he's going, I can't believe it. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. And for nine months, nine months, he couldn't speak. He learnt in those nine months the importance of actually your words can create a positive or a negative culture around. And he realised that at the end of the nine months, when he did speak, he didn't speak, I can't believe it's happened, oh my goodness, oh wow, God, it's impossible, surely. No, he didn't. He said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, it's good that God is with us. When we're quiet... When those words that still rattle around our head saying we can't do it, calm down. It may take nine months. I'm hoping it's going to take you less than that. It may only take you a minute. You realise, actually, I'm building myself up. God is with you. God does guide you. God does He is with you. I end with this image here. Me and uh, the, the family have done many walks around Shenley in the, in the lockdown. And one of the things that I see... Uh, when we come from the Watford training ground and go up and see um, all of these, this wonderful um, uh, seed that was sown and this, this beautiful um, grape seed that's grown up. There is countless, countless wonderful um, uh, fruit that's going to come from it. And there's only very small areas where we see that there is um, a lack or, or not much. I believe that I'm talking to you, if you're listening to this talk today, I believe you are a person who is called to create great fruit, where it is 30, 60, or 100. I believe God has put great, amazing things in you. All you need to do is open the door. Be in agreement with God about your life. Be in agreement. God is saying you can do it. Be in agreement. God is saying you are one of a kind. Be in agreement. God is saying... You are the one that I am waiting for to do a good work in your community. So this is the first talk back. And I hope you realise that this is a marker in the sand for us for the future. That God wants you to be blessed. Bless yourself so that you can then do the big work of blessing others. In Jesus' name. Let's just end um, um, just for a moment in prayer and we're going to then turn to John for our intercessory prayers and before we end our service. Lord, we just want to thank you today that you are with us. We want to thank you that you call us to be kind to us, 
to bless ourselves with all the things that you have given us. Help us to be quiet when we feel uh, negative things come our way. Help us to be a blessing to others. Thank you that we're a church we can lean on one another. Thank you that we are British and we have a self-deprecating humour. But may you constantly remind us that we are your children. There's no condemnation in us. We have the resurrection of you ready and available 24-7. In Jesus' name. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father.